dear students, welcome to Bosco Campus Vision. I am Rania, faculty member of Postgraduate Department of English. In this lecture series, I am dealing the paper 20th Century Malayalam Literature in English Translation, which is a core paper for Semester 3 BA English Students of Kerala University. This is the second part of the poem, The Story of Acts, written by Malamani Amma. The story of Axe or Maruvinde Katha was included in Balamani Amma's collection titled Saupanam. This poem is based on a mythological figure Parashurama who is the incarnation of Lord Mahavishnu. The genesis of Kerala is discussed in this poem. So in the last class we had gone through the life of Parashurama. He killed his mother as per his father's wish. Because she sinned in mind by wishing for Gandhava's or palace life. His brothers and father startled by seeing the speedy action of Parashurama. That is, by using his axe, he killed his mother. Now, let's continue the poem. Father entered the pyre of my soul, burning in grief and asked, What is your wish, my boy? That my mother should live in your chance memory not as a zina but as sacred as ever. So, by seeing the speedy action of Parashurama, his father asked his wish. And Parashurama replied, Forget my mother's sin and she should not live as a zina in your chance memory but live as sacred. And as his son wished, Jamadagni grant the wish to his son. Okay, so here the great sage Jamadagni grant the wish of his son. And as we continue, here it says that, Yet I sat not under the shade of the ashram tree, nor dissolved like a shadow in it. So at that time, Parashurama was totally upset of the previous act he had committed. And what happened? In the land of Bharata, with a thousand sacred rivers, temples and holy ashrams, I wandered around for long. The stone of sin heavy on my mind and the axe firm on my shoulder. So what happened? Parashurama was totally upset. He wandered around the land of Bharata. Bharata was actually the ancestor of Pandava and Kaurava. So Parashurama wandered long around sacred rivers, temples, holy ashram. But the stone of sin, it is stayed in his mind. The cruelty of killing his mother, that is the sin he had committed. So he wandered around with lack of sensitivity. And here it is explained that roamed around snow-clad mountains, numbing mind and body. He has no sensitivity. He has no uh, senses. So insensibly he roamed around snow-clad mountains. Around forests, loud with roar of si uh, roar of lions, so he wandered around forests and on seashores, waves rushing and crashing over. In the seashores, waves rushing and crashing over, and I saw men of my race deep in meditation. So all these places he saw men of his race, those who are in deep meditation. Some singing God's praise. So some of them singing, uh, singing praise of God. Some silent, worn out from long penance. So there he had, see, he had seen a lot of persons who are meditating, who are practicing the penance. Then come to the poem. They groped for the unknowable, propped by reason that said, not this, not this. And the sages who were in meditation, they were in search for unknowable, initiated and said, not this, not this, seeking for some other thing. So they are meditating for some other thing. And they say, says that it is not, not this, not this. And they are meditating for something else. And as we continue, the Kshatriya rises moves from place to place in Clanging armor, glittering robes, destroying all that blocked their path, plundering all that caught their fancy. Mother was but a victim of Kshatriya habit of killing for pleasure. Someone whispered into my soul, 
Why does the matricide spare these pleasure seekers? And meanwhile, on the other side of life, among Kshatriyas, uh, Kshatriyas are people who are looting and plundering everything by moving from place to place with shining armor and glittering robes, glittering dress. And here Parashurama thinks and listens to his soul. Actually, killing for pleasure is doing by Kshatriyas. It is an act of Kshatriyas. And he asks himself why the mother killer, why the matricide avoid the pleasure seekers. The question tormented him. Okay, here actually he is asking a question to himself, to his soul. Why does the matricide spare these pleasure seekers? And as we move on, the flame of fury flared up a while only to subside throwing the heart in darkness leaving behind ember and soot, lured again by the clay lamps in the ashram that held its flame straight heavenward. So the flame of fury in Parashurama ignited for some time. His mind is in darkness. Ember and ash left in his heart because of the intensity of the question why the matricide spared pleasure seekers. He wants to go back to his hermit life. So, the Kshatriyas laid siege to the holy hermitage, stole my poor father's cow, raised down shade-giving trees. So what happened? When he went back to his home, hermitage, what happened there? The Kshatriyas laid siege to the holy hermitage, stole my poor father's cow, raised down shade-giving trees. They, Shiktriyas, attacked hermitage of Parashurama and his family and once they stole his father's cow. And they also cut off the shade-giving trees in the hermitage. I rushed off, silent, but with a purpose. Why did my lord give me this ghastly white axe, if not to wipe out evil? Battle with the royalty in the city of Mahishmadi fought in fierce fury all alone. The invincible power of penance, the wealth I had gained through generations, coming to my aid in dire need. Like a torch of fire in the child's hands, it burned their army to ashes. And in a trice, King Karthavirya fell along with his retinue, the final rot of a great kingdom. See what happened there. When Parashurama came back after wandering all around the world, he, he came to know that his uh, ashram was destroyed and his father's cow had been stolen. The Kshatriyas cut off shade-giving trees in the hermitage also. At that time, he was silent for purpose. He asked the Christian why Lord Shiva gave him the white axe if not to wipe out evil from earth. Actually, the axe, axe is the weapon of Parashurama. It is given, it is gifted by Lord Shiva. Shiva. So, he asked the question, why Lord Shiva give him the white axe if not to wipe out evil from the earth? And again, he says that battle with the royalty in the city of Mahishmadi fought in fierce fury all along. In Mahishmadi, Mahishmadi is the ancient city located in the central part of India. And in Mahishmadi, there was a battle between Parashurama and Kshatriya. He fought the battle alone and won. So the strength for which he gained from this angst and penance. So for, uh, for winning that particular battle, the strength which he had acquired through his long-term penance and through this acts. So the wealth I had gained through generations coming to my aid in dire need. Like a torch of fire in a child's hand, it burned their army to ashes. And in a trice, King Karthavirya fell along with his retinue, the final rot of a great kingdom. The axe was like a fire torch and it burned the army of Kshatriya. In a short time, King Karthavirya attacked Parashurama hermitage, but Parashurama defeated him and also his kingdom and here is the reference of king karthavirya and in uh, in purana it is said that king karthavirya the speciality of king karthavirya is he has uh, 
thousand hands. Okay, so in a short time, the king Kartavirya attacked Parashurama's hermitage, and at that time also he could defeat King Kartavirya, who has thousand hands, uh, and by using the power of penance and axe, this uh, Parashurama defeated King Kartavirya. And as we continue, then back to the ashram and its tulsi lined front yard, the blood smeared sword in hand. So after killing Kathavirya, he came back to tulsi lined hermitage uh, and with a blood smeared sword. I took in wisdom of eternal Brahman that spoke through father. You have caught a great sin, poor boy. Frittering away on a silly revenge, the mental power garnered with great effort by yogis. See what happened then. And as he came back after, back after killing Kshatriyas including Kartavirya, what did his father told? He didn't receive the response as he expected. His, his father told that Parashurama spent his power on a silly revenge, the mental and spiritual power he acquired through penance. So, his father, uh, Jamadagni, he was a great sage. And according to the great sage, sages should have the capability to control their emotions. And when Parashurama killed Kartavirya and uh, like many, many Kshatriyas, when he come back, what his father, was to father told him that, Parashurama had spoiled his power for a silly revenge. Jamadagni advises his son, you must not use your power for the silly reason and it must use it must not use for the vanity but for the good service. Yogis must use his power in order to do some good service. So here it is, it is described that the spiritual wealth of saintly forefathers is spiritual is well spent on good of the world, not in pursuit of vanity. Being warlike might be a weakness for the royalty, for others it's end of the three worlds, and spells doom for their soulless. Go and wash the stain of blood in holy streams, where one pays for one's pleasures. And he advised his son, Jamadagni advised his son, it must not use for vanity. Your power must not use for vanity but for good service. Take revenge is a weakness for royalty of Kshatriyas. Taking revenge is the act of Kshatriyas but not for saints. And for saints it is the end of three worlds. Three worlds here means earth, sky and heaven. And father says, go and wash your hands in holy streams to redeem from the sin. So, because Parashurama killed a lot of people, so his father says, go and wash your hands in holy streams to redeem from the sin. And as we continue, I travel across lands that resonate with the price of King Kartavirya, haughty and hot-headed yet humane, impetuous yet with a fine sense of duty, bold in adversity yet agreeable. In the same breath they declare, Brugurama is the destroyer of the world, a kangal in the Rishi clan that ruins things with the power of his soul. So what happened? So in order to fulfill his father's advice, he set out. He travelled across the lands of Kartavirya to whom he had killed. And when he, when he go through the land of Kartavirya, he came to know that people say, even though the king was a short-term bird, he was a short-term bird, impetuous, but he was humane and dutiful. So they again said, Brugrama is the destroyer of the world. Brugrama uh, is actually the son of Brahma, Rishi Brahma, uh, and he was one among the Sapta Rishis. So Brugrama, uh, Brugrama is the destroyer of the world. He was a kangal in the Rishi clan. Here Parashurama is equated with Brugurama. So Brugurama is equated with Parashurama. That means Brugurama was a kanker. So kanker is the person who had bad influence. So uh, he was a kanker in the Rishi clan. Okay. 
Okay, let's continue. The pride of success drops slowly away, revealing God's glory in the dead enemy. The Lord gave me this axe to fight evil, who in the end can tell good from evil. So the pride of Parashurama lost as he knows the glory of his enemy. So what happened? When he went through the land of Karthavirya, people praised him. People praised their lost king. So the pride of Parashurama lost as he knows the glory of his enemy. Again he is tormented by questions. Who can tell good from evil? So he is asking the question, who in the end can tell good from evil? Who can tell good from evil? And what happened then? I returned home after a long absence, unmindful of the axe car on my shoulder, to hear the words of my brothers in tears. Father is no more. Karthavirya's son killed him in revenge. The ayah that had died down wakes up again. Flayers in you like pralayagni, all consuming fire. I tear around I tear around the world, mad as a whirlwind, killing on my way all men of royal race. Okay, what happened? Finally he returns home. At that time he from his fa uh, from his brothers he came to know that the son of Kathavirya, the sons of Kathavirya killed his Kill their father. So again Parashurama became furious and decided to kill all royal people in the world. As we continue, a phantom lolling its bloody tongue with the axe held aloft. I offer Tapana on the river bank stained with the blood of the royal race. The mind recalling sadly so late father's advice made in eternal wisdom. The spiritual wealth of saintly forefathers is spent well on the good of the world, not in pursuit of vanity. If alive, would father nourished on the hoary culture of rishis, be pleased with this curse of a deadly staff. See what happened? A phantom lolling its bloody tongue with the axe held aloft. I offer Tapana on the river bank stained with the blood of the royal race. So Parashurama looked like a phantom figure with blooded tongue. He raised his axe. When he raised his axe, it indicates that he is going to attack someone. So he make tap, Tarpana. Tarpana is a type of offering. So he make Tarpana on a river bank with uh, the blood of royal race. So, and so he killed a lot of people. The mind recalling sadly so late. Father's advice made in eternal wisdom. The spiritual wealth of saintly forefathers is well spent on the good of the world, not in pursuit of vanity. So at that time also he recalled his father's words. So while doing his this tarpana, he recalls his father's advice. You must use your power for the wellness not for vanity. So there came a doubt in his mind. What was his doubt? So as, as it is described in this poem, the spirit, uh, so here, if alive would father nourished on the hoary culture of rishis be pleased with this curse of a deadly stab. So what was his question? So there came a question in his mind, would father, would his father have been happy for the way in which he was killed? The wind and the sea repeat the curse. You have wasted the power of penance, callousness turning to grief, revealing the saintly serenity of the soul. An axe cannot combat evil, it only piles up evil, and more and more of evil. And the wind and the sea repeat the curse and said, You have wasted the power of penance. Lack of sensitivity turns to grief. Finally, he understand the serenity in him. So what happened then? After these killings, he be, the, these acts tormented him a lot. So the wind and the sea repeat the curse. The curse was uh, made by his father. So, and he realized the thing that an axe cannot came, combat evil. It only piles up evil. So he recognized that an axe can't combat evil. And he again wanders. See? Here it is described as, I roam for us seeking the succor of sages for the anguished mind. Some say, give, give away the lands conquered, 
the sacrifice of the trophy is bound to the sinner. So he again wanders and meets several sages. Some said, give away the, the land you have conquered and sacrifice the trophy is bound to the sinner. I did give tracks of give tracks of land to Brahmins, yet knew no happiness, no respite. The restless mind taunted. You are condemned, condemned by the Aryas. You will not reign long here. And actually, Parashurama, uh, later Parashurama gifted the lands to Brahmins, but he didn't get happiness. And he became restless. His mind said, you are condemned by the Aryas. Who are these Aryas? Aryas are actually ancient inhabitants of Bharata. So his mind, um, his restless mind taunted, you are condemned, condemned by the Aryas. Okay, my dear students, with this I am concluding for today. Uh, let's continue the poem in the coming class. Please do the homework and send me through WhatsApp. Thank you. Have a nice time.